Some breaking news now, and in the last few minutes, the Ministry of Defence has announced that Prince Harry has left Afghanistan after his second tour of duty. And in the wake of his departure, we can now bring you his most candid interview ever. The Prince's job, co-pilot on an Apache helicopter. In other words, the one with his finger on the trigger. Cameras were given rare access to Prince Harry over the Christmas period in Camp Bastion, and it shows him with his guard down and prepared to really speak his mind. Porrick O'Brien reports. A deal was done. The palace and Ministry of Defence agreed with the media on more open, managed press access to Harry's tour of Afghanistan. Oh, there it is. <laughs> During his last deployment, a media blackout fell apart and he had to come home. This time, camera crews were given rare access to him over Christmas in Camp Bastion. He was relaxed. His guard was down. They got to know him. Just don't mention the press. I'm out here doing a job, and, and I really enjoy it. Um, I never wanted you guys to be out here, but um, there was an agreement made. I don't know who quoted that. I think it was probably the Sun newspaper. But um, because we haven't got mobile phones out here, they obviously they, um, they can't bug our phones. I'm surprised how many people in the UK actually read it. Um, I mean, everyone's, gu everyone's guilty for buying the newspapers, I guess, but um, hopefully no one actually believes what they read. <laughs> and given what happened to his mom, it's easy to understand why. I think it's fairly obvious how far back it goes <laughs> to when I was very small. The Prince seems less comfortable during sit-down interviews. He doesn't like them. Just as well. It wasn't done in the wrong way, but it was just... When the call comes, there's no more sitting down. He spent months training as an Apache helicopter co-pilot. The flying tanks have to be ready to take off within minutes to support ground troops. The centrepiece of the £28 million chopper is its weapon system. The Apache unit has reportedly the highest kill rate in the war in Afghanistan. As co-pilot Harry's finger is on the trigger. Take a life to save a life. Um, that's what we sort of revolve around, I suppose. Uh, you know, if, if, the, if, the, if there's people... If there's people trying to do um, bad stuff to our guys, then you know we'll we'll, we'll take them out of the game. I suppose um, it's not it's not the reason I decided to do this to do this job. The reason I did this job was to get out back out here and, and, and carry on and carry on with a job. There are other important questions as well, which we will come to. Those photos, for one, why his brother isn't out here, another. But first, how do you go for a wee in an Apache? Once you've been out here for two or three weeks, you master the art of basically peeing by basically sitting down like this. Um, so I originally couldn't do it during the training courses. I, it just couldn't happen. And also, every time I said, right, I'm just having a pee, the guy in the back would start doing this, which, you know, it's not helpful for anybody. There's no hole in the bottom of the seat. It's literally a bag. Some people go <laughs> blow it out <laughs> so that it makes it easier, but other people just open it up, and it's they're amazing. Um, Trouble John, thank you for the amazing piss bags you make for us. Royal warrant of appointment out of the way, on to more serious matters. One of the big questions was whether he'd become a target and thus put other soldiers at risk. Another big question, how he feels about his brother not being here. Harry is not afraid of going off message. There is a bit of jealousy, not just the fact that I get to fly this, but obviously he'd love to be out here, and I don't see why, to be honest with you, I don't see why he couldn't. Um, his job out here would be flying the IIT or whatever, doing Chinook missions, just the same as us. No one knows who's in the cockpit. Um, yes, he'd get shot at, but, you know, the, guy, if the, guys are being, if the guys who are doing the same job as us are being shot at on the ground, and I, don't, I don't think there's anything wrong with us being shot at as well. Um, and, yeah, people back home will have issues with that, but we're not special. Um, the guys out there are, as simple as that. Strange to say it of a pilot, but he comes across as grounded. He's in his element here, a military man with an acute sense of duty to colleagues, to country. A million miles from Sin City. And that Las Vegas hotel suite. Yeah, well, I mean, the, I don't really want to get into, in, into, into details of what I think or what other people think. You know, at the end of the day, I, you know, I probably let myself down, let my family down, let other people down, but at the end of the day, you know, I was, I was in a private area and I sh there should be a certain amount of pri privacy that one should expect. Um, you know, back home, um, everyone, all my close friends, you know, rallied around me and, and were great. 
it was probably a classic example of me probably being too much army and, and not enough prince. Too much army, not enough prince. He sees them as two quite distinct parts of his life, two quite distinct jobs. I hope I'm doing right, you know, as, as I said, and as I always say, you know, um, work hard, play hard. Um, and I'll always, I'll always be enjoying my job and however long that may carry on for. Um, then obviously I've got uh, the other job to fall back on, so, um, yeah, I'll be busy. How does he come across? Down to earth, funny, loyal, laddish, fond of catchphrase. Too much army, not enough prince. Work hard, play hard. Take a life to save a life. There are some very clear lines in this 28-year-old's head.